It's incredibly difficult to know whether what we are saving or have saved is sufficient when it comes to both our personal savings and our retirement planning. And it's a question that comes up a lot in conversations that I have when people ask me, well, what will someone have typically saved that around my age of X or wherever it is? And so we often can't help ourselves in thinking about what our peers or colleagues are doing in terms of their savings. Although it's vital that you focus on your own position and your own objectives when it comes to yours and your family's life, it is interesting to see what the average and median savings and net worth is across the UK. And we'll be using the statistics from the ONS Wealth and Assets Survey and tables by Nimble Funds to identify what the total household savings is, what the savings rate is, and what the average and median household and individual wealth is by age in the UK. It pays an interesting picture on what we can easily see where we are personally in relation to these numbers. It should be seen for what it is as this is a UK wide analysis and therefore the standard of living and required assets will vary depending on where you are in the country and your very own specific situation. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Edmund Bailey. I'm a chartered financial planner with over 10 years experience in financial services. Now, one thing that is really important to understand is the difference between the average and the median when it comes to these statistics. The average has a tendency to be skewed upwards due to a small number of households with very, very high savings levels and very high net worth, which pulls that figure higher. The average being the total sum divided by the number of households, a more useful and realistic figure for the sake of comparison is the median figure and the differences are quite extreme. The median being the middle number in the set of data and gives us a more usable result which isn't skewed by those outliers. And there's an important point in here as well is that it's common to see the average figure being used when it isn't representative of the majority of individuals. A case in point is when talking about average stock market returns as the reality will often look entirely different with the majority of returns where they're nowhere near the average. This can be especially true when you have one year of very high performance, which will bring that average return up significantly if all the other corresponding years are lackluster. It's just really being mindful of averages as they can be anything but that average. For example, the savings rate per household in the UK is 76,301. However, most households have less than this average due to a small number of households with very high savings rates. The median gross savings in the UK is far lower, and again, far more realistic number of £12,500. That's the median amount is £12,500. The median, which means that 50% of households have more than the median amount saved and 50% have less than this amount. And this is gross, so it doesn't take into account financial liabilities such as overdrafts and balances on credit cards. And it's made up of savings accounts, ISA, shares, bonds, trusts, and other forms of financial assets, but not pensions and property wealth, which will come on to adding in later on. It's also worth mentioning that 25% of households have less than £2,100 saved. Now, I'd be interested to know whether that is surprising or more or less than you'd expect. Let me know down in the comments below. We can then break this down further into types of household savings. This is just looking at the median for those accounts that individuals have and where people have these accounts. These are the typical balances in place. So this is the typical savings for households that have these accounts. So where someone does have an account, this is the median amount that is typically found within those accounts. So all current accounts, 2,000 pounds. I won't go through all of these, I'll just highlight some of these. ISAs, 12,000 pounds. So interestingly, cash ISAs, there's far more individuals that have cash ISAs, but the median amount is far lower, 9,200. Less people have stocks and shares ISAs, but again, the median amount is far higher at 31,000, showing those accounts typically have a far higher value within them, but there's far less of them. So just bear that in mind. And I'd say this is fairly standard in terms of national savings certificates and bonds, £1,200. And then again, it's broken down into the other types of savings products and insurance products that are there. So what is the typical household total wealth in the UK? The median total wealth per household is 302,500. And here again, the average figure is skewed heavily upwards to 576,000 pounds. A huge difference between that median figure of 302,500 and the average figure of 576,000. Largely to, again, to some very wealthy households pulling the average up way above that median level. Our average is almost twice that amount of the median level. So if we take the median level of 302,500, it means half the households have 
more and half have less, the total median wealth figure is comprised of the following four types of wealth. Net financial wealth, which is the value of financial assets held, including formal investments such as savings accounts, ISAs, endowment stocks and shares, etc., along with current accounts. Physical wealth, which is self-reported value of owned household contents, possessions and valuables, including art and antiques. Private pension wealth, which is obviously going to be a big one, which is the value of pension pots already accrued, such as personal pensions, occupational pensions and pensions in payment, but doesn't include any state pensions. Net property wealth, which is self-reported value of property owned, including a main residence plus any other land or property owned in the UK or abroad. So let's first take a look at the average wealth by age in the UK, and then we'll look at the median. So we have our table for our average household wealth by age, and as you see, we have our ages broken down into bandings on the left-hand side. And then, as mentioned before, the four types of wealth really the physical wealth the wealth that you'd obviously find around ultimately around your property and then the two big ones property wealth and private wealth which is pretty much going to make up the majority of most individuals private wealth and then financial wealth which is really those savings accounts cash ices stocks and shares ices bonds and that sort of thing and then it says that you'd really expect the over the years that wealth accumulates with time as we're saving more as the capital value of our property is increasing and we're paying down the mortgage etc i think what's interesting on this table is when we look at a couple of things of age 40 to 44 is a bit of a curious jump really from 35 to 39 in terms of total wealth. We're seeing a significant amount more going into pension and obviously a bit more of the property value being paid off or the, the, the capital value of the property increasing, maybe a combination of the two. So it's a bit interesting and also we're seeing that financial wealth increase as well. So what this is down to is really anyone's guess as to Potentially, that's people taking it a bit more seriously from that age. There'll be a number of factors involved in there. So let's just take a look at this private pension wealth for a 55 to 59 year old, which I think is interesting. Now, just bear in mind, this is that the average numbers. We'll have a look at the median in a minute because it does make for quite a difference. But at the average level, it's about 418,000, which I would say is a sustainable level of income that you could take from that would be about 17,000 pounds a year very much dependent on individual circumstances, etc. But uh, as a very broad brushstrokes figure, we could say about 17,000, then potentially two adults in that household getting a state pension each, that's 20,000. So about 37,000 pounds of, of pension income that could be derived approximately for this household. They've obviously then, in addition to that, they've got their financial wealth as well, which is their savings, their cash ices, etc. And, uh, and again, they could potentially take an income from there which would approximately put them about the moderate standard of living as far as the PLSA's retirement living standards is concerned. Obviously, you'll see the difference here for the London weighting, which is 36,200. Now, again, for the 60 to 64-year-old, slightly more in terms of uh, pension wealth at 483,000. Again, a very approximate income, pension income of about 20,000 could potentially be taken from that plan. In addition, two state pensions at £10,000 each, and we're looking at about an income of around £40,000 a year just from the pension. We've then obviously got our financial wealth here as well, which we could again actually derive an income from of several thousand pounds a year to add to our private pension wealth. Now let's look at the median, which gives us a, I think, a more realistic picture of the those levels of wealth. As you'll see for property wealth for a 20 to 24 year old up to 25 to 29, we've actually got zero. We've got no property wealth in there at all, which is the median, which arguably I say is probably more realistic of the situation within the UK. Same picture in terms of obviously the increasing wealth of as we go up through the ages, but significantly lower in terms of those total amounts. For a 55 to 59 year old in terms of private pension wealth, wealth we got 180,000 pounds, which would probably give you a pension income of around about 7,000 to 8,000 pounds per year. Again, two state pensions on top of that. If you had a, a couple in that household, that's 27,200 from pension wealth. Again, broadly around that moderate standard of living for a couple, and but a much smaller financial wealth as far as savings, stocks and shares, cash ices, etc. of 10,600 pounds. For a 60 to 64 year old, probably a, a pension income of around 10,000 pounds per year, 
plus two state pensions, around £30,000 per year as far as private pension wealth is concerned. Again, around this kind of age is when typically people are looking to retire. Certainly from sort of 60s to mid 60s is really that the, the typical time that people do look to stop working and start to actually taking an income from their pension and potentially why we see that drop in pension wealth. Now this, bearing in mind, this doesn't include any defined benefit pension schemes in here. This is simply private pension wealth, which has been accumulated or is currently in payment. And then we've got the median wealth per adult. So this is really taking those household amounts and let's breaking it down to per adult to give you possibly a more of an indicational steer as to where each individual is within the UK. And, and I think it makes for interesting reading. Again, the amounts are vastly lower than you would expect in terms of if we were looking at the average for a 55 to 59 year old private pension wealth of just under £90,000. For 60 to 64 year old, it's about £127,000. And as you'd expect, the other large part of their wealth is made up of uh, property. So really is split relatively evenly, I suppose, between uh, property wealth and private pension wealth as well. And this just does give us that indication as to where the UK is in terms of individual savings accounts and how much they've built up within their pensions and within their savings accounts.